We've talked about this solenoid valve or this liquid line solenoid valve, but think to yourself, where would you install this and what's its purpose? We know how it works, we went into detail about it, but just stop the video for a moment and think, how does this work and why would we need it? Let's think about where we could put this. There's many places to put it, but it's typically located somewhere in the liquid line. Sometimes it'll be installed near the outdoor unit, but you'll typically see it installed before your metering device at the indoor unit. Refrigeration is typically gonna be here. A lot of times for residential, if you see it, it'll be located outside. Now, cool thing about this, we talked earlier about a crankcase heater and a crankcase heater helped prevent refrigerant from migrating to the crankcase and all the liquid refrigerant being inside the oil. Well, this also is essentially about refrigerant migration. So if we think of a walk-in cooler or a walk-in freezer, this is always gonna be a lower temperature. So all the liquid refrigerant says, hey, we wanna hang out where it's cool. Let's go hang out where it's cool. So all the refrigerant will start to migrate to the inside walk-in cooler, walk-in box, whatever it is, where it's cooler here and all the refrigerant will fill up this evaporator coil with refrigerant. Then the compressor starts up and it pulls all this liquid refrigerant straight into the suction side and it can kill or damage the compressor. So what we can do is use this liquid line solenoid valve here and this closes. When this closes, it stops the flow of refrigerant. So that way it prevents refrigerant from migrating to the evaporator coil. For residential, sometimes you'll see them and they'll install it where it's wired to the outdoor unit to where it closes on the outside. There's many different ways of wiring it, but typically when you see them in commercial, they have two purposes. One, to prevent refrigerant migration, and number two, they actually use it as a control. We'll get into more of that later in the detail. What this does is an automatic pump down. So what happens, this valve closes off. So think about the flow of refrigerant going this direction. And this valve, when we're de-energized, we've killed the electromagnet, so the valve closes. So the refrigerant can't go any farther. But the compressor continues to run. So the compressor pulls all the refrigerant out of the evaporator coil because it's all stopped here. As it pulls all the refrigerant out of the evaporator coil, the suction pressure starts to drop. When that suction pressure drops, we use one of the pressure switches we learned about earlier, and that pressure switch closes and shuts off the compressor. There's a lot more that goes into it wiring-wise, but simply the pressure is what shuts the compressor off. The thermostat will say, hey, we need more cooling. The thermostat will energize our electromagnet, our solenoid, open the valve. Now refrigerant is going through a metering device, boiling from a liquid to vapor, superheating. We're absorbing heat from the box and our suction pressure starts to go up. When our suction pressure goes up, our pressure switch closes, the compressor comes on and keeps the refrigeration cycle going until the thermostat satisfies. When the thermostat satisfies, it kills the electromagnet, the valve closes and it goes into what we call an automatic pump down. All the refrigerant backs up this direction. We suck it out of the evaporator coil and that way we end up with the refrigerant where we want it when we need it we prevent refrigerant migration and we prevent a liquid startup a uh, flooded compressor in the startup so pretty cool way we do it with refrigeration sometimes for residential you'll do it to prevent the refrigerant from migrating back outside or prevent all the refrigerant from migrating inside sometimes if your compressor is up too high they use it to help prevent all that refrigerant from flooding down into the inside of the house it's not used so much in residential as it's used primarily in commercial but there's tons of applications and there's even many more than i suggested with this we have hot gas bypass and we got hot defrost there's many things but if you think about what a solenoid valve does this is just two little examples of what you can use to control refrigerant flow. If you think about how this valve works and what you can do with it, you're unlimited. Come up with your own invention. So here we have a solenoid valve. This is our heat absorbing paste we put on while we were brazing it in. But this solenoid valve keeps, it's normally closed, it keeps the flow of refrigerant completely closed right here so it can't flow. So if we were pulling a vacuum, we could typically only pull to this point, which wouldn't help us. So what we have is this handy dandy little magnet. What we're gonna do is put this magnet right on top of our solenoid valve and it pulls this valve open so that now we can pull a vacuum here through both sides of the system. It's also important that we have that solenoid valve on while we're brazing so that we can have that open also to flow nitrogen through this valve while we braze.